Hello and welcome to this episode of Hospitality Talks. My name is Katie Moses, I'm founder and MD of Cam Media and I am very excited to have with me one of my favourite hospitality people, Mr James Nye, who is MD of Anglian Country Inns. James, do you want to tell us a little about, bit about you and ACI? Yeah, hi Katie, great to be here. Uh, yeah, I'm Managing Director of Anglian Country Inns. Uh, it's our family business, we'll, we've been going 25 years this year. Uh, we've got eight venues across um, Hertfordshire and Norfolk, uh, predominantly food-led. Um, we've won the uh, best premium food at the Publican a few times, but we do have accommodation, wedding venues, cocktail bars, coffee shops as sort of additional parts of our business at the various sites. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, just open up um, last six weeks. A lot of them have big gardens, which has been helpful. And uh, finally got the last one open this week that's gone because that's the only one that didn't have any outside space. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Before we talk about the sort of stages of reopening that you've been through and, and how the business has coped with that, what did you do during lockdown? Did you, did you totally lock down, shut everything? Did you have an at-home offering? Did you do takeaways? You know, what, what, what did you do out there in your venues? Yeah, I, initially we just shut everything. I think the, the impact of it back in, well, well, over a year ago now, was quite a shock to the system. Um, we had a couple of sites offering takeaways initially that, that we just just knocked on the head. Um, after probably about sort of two or three months, we started to get the feel of what was happening and we started moving towards a, a sort of do-it-yourself at home kit. So we had the home at home and the farmhouse at home. Um, and it was more probably to keep the guys at work occupied and give them something to be, be focusing on. Yeah, we did some really nice um, sort of smarter food that you can cook at home kits that you could take home just just to make it a bit more interesting and to spice up the uh, the home kitchens the the monotony of, of lockdown yes absolutely and if there was one thing i did get really fed up with it was my own cooking um so bringing in these sort of at home options was a, was a real thing in, in this household specifically so any of the take home or hospitality at home stuff that you're keeping now or that will continue coming out of any of your venues uh, that's really interesting. We, we're not going to be continuing at the moment, mainly because the focus is getting back into sites. And actually, we saw as we got closer to reopening um, back on the 12th of April, a lot of the demand for the at-home stuff dropped off quite significantly. Um, yeah, we've got one site that we, we got onto Deliveroo. And again, that, that did really well at the beginning of the second lockdown. But then as we got towards the reopening, I think the demand was dropping off quite a lot. So we, we sort of ended the takeaway um, service, mainly so we can focus on getting the, uh, the on-site delivery back to where it needs to be, which has uh, been an experience. <laughs> well, absolutely. I mean, you know, listen, anybody with a, that doesn't do what they normally do for a job for 15 months and then has to come back and do it, you know, there's, there's obviously a lot of sort of re, re-entry, retraining, et cetera, that has to happen there. But you and I spoke before about how great your staff retention has been. I mean, how, how have you done that in, in, a, in a situation where so many operators have lost a, you know, a, a massive amount of staff, be it through the pandemic or through, through Brexit, whatever it might be? Yeah, I mean, this, this was um, probably one of the first things we, we did. We had, we had three main objectives when the very first uh, pubs uh, closed down. And that was, first of all, to make sure the business survived, because if, if the business survived, it meant we could carry on employing people. Um, the second one was to look after our staff and just stay in touch with them and be as, as open and transparent as we could be. Uh, and then the third one was to look at how we could sort of you know, benefit from what was happening. But I think it was that second one about just staying in touch. And it wasn't really complicated stuff. It was just trying to get a phone call to all the different members of the team, just check in on them, just see how they're doing. We did a few sort of uh, videos of, of updates of what it meant, because I think there's quite a lot of um, the media were, were chucking out so many different uh, conflicting stories that we sort of simplified that and condensed it down to the staff, what it actually meant for them. And again, just sticking up for them. So even before we knew about the JRS, we committed to paying out all the staff their March salary, even though the pubs had closed. And, and it was just those little sort of actions of, of backing the staff and supporting them. Mm -hmm. I think that sort of carried it through. And that's so we've, we've tried to stay in touch as much as we've had. We've lost a few people, but I think, you know, in, in the context of the wider, wider scheme thing, we've done really well to hang on to a lot of our core team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think you're, you're right that, that sometimes it's not the complex things that you do, it's the more simple things that you do and doing those well. And staff will appreciate that constant contact, that idea of you simplifying things for them. So moving forward then, we had the outdoor opening. How did that go for you? <laughs> 
Um, one thing we learned is our forecasting was absolutely rubbish. <laughs> I think what it was the weather? A, uh, well, both actually. I mean, I think we got quite lucky because it was cold, but it didn't rain for the first couple of weeks. And um, I mean, like I say, it was, it's just so hard to predict what it was going to happen. Um, so, you know, after the first few days, we realised that through the forecasting out the window and just focused on what was happening. Um, it was a really busy start back. Uh, you know, a huge amount of credit to, to our ops team who did a great job just to prepare the sites get the teams ready, get them back into the sites early and, and condition them. We actually went out on recruitment hunt quite early as well. So some of the bigger sites we went on recruiting probably four or five weeks before we were open just because we, we had an inkling it was going to be busy. And I think that's paid dividends now because we actually had good levels of staff in some of the busier sites. Um, but yeah, look, it's, it's, it's gone a lot better than we, we predicted. Uh, and I don't know if that's because our forecasting was rubbish or actually trade was a lot better. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's been a good start back. Um, and, and the question is, can we continue this for the next six months? Because I think this is just the, uh, you know, we're only six weeks in and we know that there's going to be some incredibly ripe trading um, conditions and through till September. So we're trying to sort of manage everyone now, make sure the hours are decent, uh, make sure we've got the right facilities and the right resources in. And uh, yeah, it's been a whirlwind, I think is the best yeah, way to describe it. I think that's one word for it. And, and, and so you're indoor open now. Have you noticed any change in the type of customer that you're seeing in your venues, sort of post lockdown? You know, are, are they still the regulars that you were getting or has the clientele changed at all? Uh, it's really interesting. We're seeing quite a lot of new customers. Um, I mean, we, we operate in relatively localised areas. So, yeah, we're in the home county, sort of the commuter belt north of London. Um, and there's a regular sort of regular set there and I think especially when a lot of other pubs were closed and we had our gardens open I think we were attracting quite a, you know, a new set of customers in which was, which was really good to see and then we also operate on the North Norfolk coast which is a big tourist area so again it's hard to sort of track where everyone comes from because it's much more transient trade but mm. we were getting a lot of feedback saying wow this is great and I think it's because a lot of people are exploring North Norfolk for the first time mm. um, so yeah, I think we've, we've, we sort of opened our doors to, a, to a new, uh, uh, some new, new faces, which is great. Uh, and I think, you know, well, hopefully this is going to last probably for another six to 12 months as you know, people decide to holiday in the UK or perhaps aren't commuting into London so much. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we're, we're sort of gearing up to, to sort of you know, meet a new demand from some, some new faces. Great. And what about then if we're talking about sort of product mix? Because I know that obviously you guys are fantastic at food, award winning at food, I believe. Um, how was how your product mix, mix sort of pre lockdown to post lockdown with drinks versus food and, and, and the demand of both? Yeah, so we're, we're seeing um, a lot more food coming out. Um, I mean, there, there has been some, some uh, you know, increase in, in, in the drinkers, but I think proportionally it's a lot more people coming out. Um, I think we're seeing that a lot of people are celebrating. Um, so we're seeing a lot more three courses, a lot more premiumization. The spend per head is definitely increasing in the sites. Um, and that is, that is pushing the food because the drink is going with it. But actually, it's a proportion it's the food that's increasing. So, yeah, we're very well suited to, to do that because obviously food is our, is our sort of mainstay. Um, so, yeah, I think it might naturalise out a little bit. Um, whereas, you know, people are, you know, as, as we get indoor spaces opening, we've got generally bars in our pubs as well as restaurants. So there is drinking space. But I think it's been dominated by the people coming out for food. I think table service helps. Uh, you know, we, we can you know, upsell puddings a lot easier and starters, and I think it's more of an event. Um, but yeah, the, the mix has definitely gone in favour of the food after the first six weeks. Yeah, it's interesting. We just recently ran a um, some research in conjunction with Zonal, and it was um, uh, called Plant a Plate Two, and it charts the customer journey. I'll make sure that you get a copy because I keep forgetting to send it out to everybody. But it charts the new customer journey, like post lockdown, what do they want, you know, what what are they going to do more of, less of, etc. And what we saw from that is that the uh, food led occasions were pretty safe compared to some of the more more drink led occasions that might uh, not be. Uh, quite so robust um, essentially so yes that that kind of backs up what we're thinking so just looking forward then you say obviously it's uh, I mean we stopped really making projections and predictions 15 months ago because I think we all realized that, that they all ended up in the bin but we've got hopefully fingers crossed full restrictions being lifted end of June 21st of June what do you see is next for ACI other than just the sort of, you know, survival and the tricky trading um, areas that we've got? 
Yeah, uh, look, I, I think it is. You know, we've got through the survival phase. We reopen again. Um, you know, our, our strategy is to to rebuild. Uh, so you know, get all the ops fine tuned and, and working smoothly, and and get on top of uh, you know where we need to be. Um, we are looking at um, you know rebuilding our finances, and so we're you know we're in a very good position to be able to pay back a lot of the C bills loans that we took out. Uh, and I think that rebuild phase is probably be about six months, and that's that's kind of where we're seeing it. And we're probably a bit more liquid than we thought we would be this uh, this time, mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which is great. And then that really is going to allow us to 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 grow the business. Um, it's going to be a very interesting uh, market out there. Um, there's not a lot of stock on on the, on the shelves at the moment uh, when it comes to to uh, opportunities. But yeah, you know, we're looking at where we could go and actually how we could build on you know our big sort of food led um, estate. Uh, like I say, we we think that there's going to be a, a, a really strong future out there for for what we do, sort of the premium end of pub food dining, um, and yeah, we'd look to you know there's a bit of cash we can spend in the estate to sort of bring it up to where we want it to be, um, but also go out there and realise some new opportunities. So uh, it's going to be a very exciting uh, time ahead, I think. It absolutely is, and I'm planning on a trip up to Norfolk later on this year in Elvis, the motorhome. Well, you're so, more than welcome, so give us a shout if you're in the area. <laughs> I will absolutely give you a shout, or maybe I'll do a little, little mini sort of ACI tour. Maybe I'll do that in my motorhome, just like crashing in car parks and stuff. Anyway, James, thank you so much. Really appreciate your insight. Really appreciate your take on what has happened and, and, and what we're looking at uh, in the future of the industry. Thank you. Uh, cheers, Katie. Good to catch up.